Exercise 7. This one can be long, but if we use Proposition 8.10, basically Fallen does a lot of the work for us. So, recall that Proposition 8.10 says that if F is in L1, G is in CK, and d alpha g is bounded for all alpha in omega n. That's basically n tuples of natural n of, that's like uh, anything of the form like um, x1 through xn where each x1 through xn is in omega, which is just the natural numbers union with zero. For all these things such that the norm of alpha is less than or equal to k. And here, of course, because this is a multi-index, this norm here is just you um, sum up each of the... So, um, if, like, the norm of x is equal to x1 plus x2 plus blah blah blah, all the way up to xn or whatever. But yeah. Okay, so if this, then F star G is in CK. It also says some other stuff about how you can express the derivative of this, but you don't need that for this problem. Now this is something that just as a working mathematician, you're not going to want to say like, oh, this is by Fallen Theorem 8.10. When you look at the proof of this, what he does is he basically says, oh, this is obvious by something we did in chapter 3, I think it is, or 2, one of the two. But basically when you go back to that, it's basically, the point is, how do you pass a derivative under an integral? Because that's what you're doing here. You want to pass a derivative under this convolution, and convolution is an integral. And the way you pass the that's just passing a limit under an integral. And so what you want to use is dominated convergence. So really, if you wanted to make a really nice proof of this, then what you would do is instead of saying, oh, let's cite proposition 8.10, what we would do is we would actually do a monotone convergence, no, a dominated convergence proof here. But, I mean, we can get away with, in this scenario, we can get away with not using a dominate convergence theorem proof and it will also make the proof shorter so I'm just going to let Fallen do the work and just cite his proposition. So since G is in C C K R N there exists some R greater than zero such that the support of G is contained in BR zero. That's just what, because the support is compact and compact packed sets are bounded. Also, for, for all alpha and omega n, such that norm is less than or equal to k, d alpha g is continuous and compactly supported because it's um, it's compact support is contained in the compact support of G. And so, T alpha G continuous on a bounded set means uniformly continuous and uh, it, it means bounded. Next, so let's fix an X and RN. Then for all y in the ball of, say, radius 1 about x, the, there's nothing special about the 1 here. All we need is just some specific number that's positive and greater than 0, and so 1 is, like, kind of the natural one to use. The natural 1 to use. Anyways, so we have f star g evaluated at y 
let's write out what this integral is. fz, gy minus z, dz. But then, if we look at this, g is supported, we, we are integrating this over y, we're evaluating g at y minus z. And we know that when we evaluate g at any point, it's going to be contained, it, it's only going to be uh, non-zero potentially in the ball of radius r. But we also know that y is fixed in the ball of radius 1. And so what this means is that this is equal to the integral over rn of fz times, let's multiply this by some bounded set that, that, that contains the support of g. So br x plus b one x. So the r here stands for all the kind of the different values that z could take on, and the one is for the values that y could take on. But b so by by plus here I mean that's a set plus, like the set of all points that could be written as something in here plus something in here. But you should be able to convince yourself that b r x plus b one x is just b r plus one x then g y minus z dz and then but what is this equal to now what we can do is we can actually write this as um, kind of bring the f instead of by the um, hmm I guess this is a little tricky here but um, what we have is this br plus 1x trying to think, where are we evaluating this brx1? I want this to be evaluated at z. And does that work? Yes, that works, because this z and minus z is going to be fine here, because um, the ball of radius r is symmetric, and so replacing z by minus z is fine. If we were working in, like, um, just some sort of measurable group, that wouldn't necessarily be the case, but here this is fine. And then the y here, that just gets put into the r plus 1. Yeah, so this is okay. But then, now this, we can write this as the integral, or as the convolution of br plus 1 f with g, this thing being evaluated at y. Now, Note that f is in L1 loc, which implies that f 1 br plus 1 x, should be an x there, this must be in L1, because this is just this times, uh, it's just f times that. I guess locally integrable technically means that it needs to be supported on a compact set, so let's just, let's just make it closed, just to be safe, just so that it's compact. But anyways, so this is an L1, and so by proposition 8.10, we have F1 BR plus 1X, and now that I'm being picky, this needs to be the closure, and I also need to write this indicator function in a way that's legible. This convoluted with g is in ck. But now, since f star g equals f indicator b r plus 1 x star g on b1 x, that's what we did before. We chose this this equation here holds for all y and b1 x. Uh, what does this mean? This means that we have, we look at f star g and we restrict this to b1 x. And then this is contained in ck. Um, these are functions which are um, k times continuously differentiable on the ball b1 x. And that's because basically what we're just using this result 
here, but we're able to apply it because we're restricting ourselves to B1x. But anyways, but this holds for all B1x where x ranges over Rn. Also, I don't, I probably don't need to write this, but the union overall x and Rn of B1 of x is, surprise, equal to all of Rn. But then, if f star g is in ck b1x for all b1x, we have f star g is in ck rn as desired. There's something bugging me about this here. Just because this is continuous here. Yeah, no, this is fine because it's continuous on this ball, and so it's continuous on every ball, so it's continuous on all of Rn. And so, here we go. We have completed the proof.